Sup everyone, this is Carrick from ACG and I come to you fresh from the shadowy cellars and cavernous confines of an ancient castle deep as I bring to you the review for the 3D stealth assassination game Shadwin, the female assassin simulator with a bit of a hitch in its get along. You see in Shadwin when you move, time moves, when you don't, everything around you stops. It's a unique gameplay mechanic, one part Neo in the Matrix, one part Prison Shank Simulator, and all this as you sneak past Olympian level marksmen carrying quick fire crossbows plus two, seeking to make you into a girl kebab. And all the while, you're trying to of course assassinate their king. What else would you be doing? Let's see how Shadwin does, shall we? As always, if you like the video, maybe subscribe. So here's the review for Shadwin, the world's longest escort mission, possibly the hungriest guards known to man, and mall cop castle security. Graphics are up first. Honestly, Shadwin doesn't look too shabby with an eye for post-processing effects and a large number of choices when it comes to getting the game to run well at all. The game time stop mechanic also allows for you to not only reverse time, but also change your camera around while doing so. And that adds a bit of flexibility in viewing your surroundings, even if you're rewinding yourself from the wrong end of a crossbow bolt. While texture detail isn't amazing, the game looks good and its use of lighting and various blur effects go a long way to sort of solidify this feeling of living in a spooky, strange, dark fantasy world. While separately the animations for the characters look good, especially at idle, there are some issues and a good number of problems that crop up the moment anyone really begins to move. Collision detection is just wonky throughout the title, from the rope of ever swinging that you have as the main character, to the knights that ramble through boxes ever so slowly, obviously deep into their second methadone dose, or whatever fantasy knights take to ease the edge off. Also, the swing mechanic for Shadwin just looks sorta of bad. It's fun and it works, but the rope is almost uniformly terrible, wrapping and warping around things and performing physics that are only possible in the quantum world. Climbing up onto banisters or dropping down can result in passing through geometry like a ghost, which is cool if this game was called Ghostwind. I guess as a package I'd just have to say it's okay graphically, but once the true gameplay starts, a lot of the shine sort of wears off. Sound, music, and voice. Oh, we had fish too. Did we now? I had bits of onion and potato in my stew, but all the fish was gone by the time it was my turn. Oh, come off it. You had something for dinner, which can't be said for everyone around here. And of course, sound is up first. It's excellent from the murky drips of questionable liquids in the below the castle bathroom's catacombs to the excellently mixed crackle of torches that are obviously burning a combination of pitch and horse manure. The sounds are excellent and do an incredible job adding atmosphere. But when killing is the name of the game, then we have to talk about the stabby stab sounds. And I gotta say, due to the legalities, I can't admit what it sounds like when you stab somebody or that I know. But seriously, yeah, this sounds just like someone getting stabbed. No lie, it's a vicious mix of wet and crunch. And when the animation and the sound line up and Shadow and sends another guard back to their heavenly guard post in the sky, it's really, really well done sound. Music. It, this is pretty good. It's fairly adequate. Music like this really needs to create a cohesive atmosphere for the game title, mixing in and out of the different levels, as well as the different tones and keys and themes of that music matching those locations. It's fairly in the background here, and it's a good spread of decent tracks from a violin-led somewhat dirge to unique percussion pieces. I'd say it's pretty good. I wouldn't listen to it out of the game, but it didn't get in the way here, and in many places it sort of helped the overall mood. Okay music, but forgettable. Voice. Now this is fantastic. First, the accents are great, and there's rarely any slippery slope of consonants flowing out with the wrong punch to them, indicating that someone forgot they were supposed to be a medieval knight. Also, the guards' dialogue is just excellent. Their almost hedonistically high number of times that they discuss food is also hilarious. Arguments over soup, remembering what cheese tastes like, and the excitement of little tiny children when one of them finds out they're gonna get sausage for dinner. Excellent side commentary at all times, with little story bits being fed to you as you progress further and overhear them within the game. Now, you can tell they're leading you down a particular narrative path, but it's one that's interesting, so that's really no big deal. The discussion between Shadwin and her charge is good and reflects the actions that you take. Also, the effects are well done on the voices, with subtle dropout when around the back end of a set of boxes or a large tree trunk. Sadly, there were a couple bugs. There were times when it just dropped out as well, but only enough times to really be noticeable and not enough times to detract from the overall experience. I'd say, very good voice. Gameplay. 
So Shadwin's sneaking into the castle to kill the king, because obviously that's what you do, for a reason you, of course, find out later. On the way, she saves a little girl from going to jail forever because she stole an apple. And from that point on, you decide that instead of leaving this little girl somewhere tied up or letting her go on her way, somehow you talk yourself into dragging this little girl everywhere with you as you single-handedly end more bloodlines than a game of Europa Universalis. A stealth game really relies on a couple things. The interaction of in-and-out stealth gameplay, the enemy AI, and the level design to offer an overall cohesive gameplay experience. Otherwise, it's just sort of filming the damn prison cell block via the Dark Ages. First up is control, and control is pretty hit or miss, and the mechanics for, say, hooking onto a beam and reeling yourself up to stand are a bit hit and miss, especially when sometimes you just can't do it, resulting in you having to drop and reattach to the same block at a different instant. Control during stealth and in and out of stealth work well for the most part, but that swinging mechanic and just the way it connects to different things, it works much better on boxes and on areas of diversion than it ever does when it comes to climbing. The main gameplay element here as you move around is that time moves and time stops when you do. This is refreshing when performing a move like a leap where you aren't sure you can make it. If you don't, rewind. If you overshoot, you can pause, steer yourself back onto the ledge, or go elsewhere. Now, aside from the time mechanic and Shadwin's ability to shoot a line out to most wooden objects, much of the game is a hide-and-seek third-person title with levels meted out as you hunt down that king to slay him. You can choose to kill those protecting him or sneak past them using assorted craftables like a poison dart gun and possibly the most poorly constructed landmine ever created. Not deep, the crafting did offer a bit more gameplay than just kill or don't kill, and I really liked that. And that's good, because letting these fuckers live after Pearl harboring an entire land was akin to me saying that it was okay, and that just didn't fly with me. No, instead it was my job to take out every bitch who walked this area. If you were inside the castle proper, you were going to be Carrick's fair game. And that part was fun, sneaking past guards, discussing dinner, causing a distraction by rolling a barrow out into the open while listening to them discuss evil spirits in hushed tones, only for me to drop onto them from above, or sneak up and shank them to death. Pretty damn good times. Just remember, you can also be killed, and being seen is strictly shoot first, perform a seance to ask questions later kind of affair. If they see you, an arrow is on its way directly to your thought center and will send you diving for the rewind button. And of course, that brings us to AI. You know, it's okay, depending on the difficulty, but in the end, it's based purely on sight lines and a rudimentary sound engine, and sadly, you get a number of highly questionable aspects due to that. Like bushes that have grown up in the center of castle rooms that you can hide 11 bodies in and no one notices, even if you're just right on the other side, shivin' their friend. Or the fact that a guard is like 30 feet away, staggering right at you and doesn't notice a thing, other than that his partner beside him is pissing him off because he's whistling too much. The AI failed a number of the AI tests I do in games, for these kind of games especially which can normally be accounted for with different difficulties, but setting it all the way, it was still failing. While Shadwin does offer some surprises a bit later on, in the end it's still very, very safe. Levels are set up without any regard to reflection of life of those characters within it, and instead look more like 3D versions of a Mario title. I mean, maybe that's why everyone's so hungry, because some of the places they're in, they actually can't get out of. I'm not sure, but I envision some kind of guard feeding them all and throwing these dudes scraps as they try to figure out a way to escape the location themselves. Just garden shit, because, you know, they're bored fun factor. It's okay, listen, this isn't any great shakes, and the poorly constructed level design means not much is left to the imagination. Instead, most of what it is is a duality of letting someone live or die. If you let them live, getting through the level is a mixture of knocking over boxes like you're a Winco stocking manager at night, and if you decide to kill everyone, it's the same thing, except replace boxes with guards. It's indeed one massively long escort mission as well, but with a twist. The escort isn't there to get caught or need protection, which is nice. Instead, she's there to watch your every move and basically talk down to you about everything you've done, or up to you as the case may be. I'm not sure why a morality play starring a preteen thief verbal bashing the person who saved her life from prison is a thing, but here it is. Last, the level design is sadly in no way, shape, or form up to par. This is level design for the pure, unadulterated use of the skills without any regard for the fantasy world itself. Walls erected in the middle streets? Check. Absolutely thousands of hay bales all over the world from sitting right in the middle of rooms? Check. Two third stories near a treasury? Check. It absolutely breaks you out of the fiction from beginning to end. I mean, really, Christ, one of the best locations is when you sort of get into the castle proper, and the first thing I notice is that apparently that crate from Uncharted 4 snuck into this game and multiplied, setting up everywhere, in the center of the rooms, in the middle of the walkways, and down tunnels. It did less to spur the gameplay as it did to tell you almost exactly what you needed to do where. In fact, much of this game, almost the entire title, felt like one large tutorial level. So as you guys know, I rate games on a buy, wait for sale, rent, or never touch it rating scale. On the PC, rent is switched over to deep, deep sale. 
This is a wait for a sale. While technically competent and interesting from time to time, and some people are going to like this more than others, it's still got pedestrian level design that hurts it. And the one thing it seems like it wants to showcase, which is interesting gameplay, is held back by just fairly pedestrian and tutorial-like level design. After a short amount of time, to me at least, it became absolutely rote and repetitive. So as always, if you guys liked the video, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, give it a thumbs down. Maybe check out our Reddit, maybe check out the Patreon, maybe check out some of our other videos. Peace out.